In this video, we're going to discuss time to market in the context of the Agile transformation. Whenever we choose to change our way of working, it would make sense to identify what the potential benefits of that change would be compared to how we have been working previously. Additionally, we should be able to determine how to measure success in realizing those benefits. Throughout the 20th century and into the 21st century, management was based on theories of management proposed by Frederick Winslow Taylor in his book, The Principles of Scientific Management, which was published in 1902. Those principles were sound during the industrial age and could be credited with introducing the idea of management into workplaces. Those practices were further developed through the Toyota production system and eventually in the field of software development from lightware development practices into what we now call Agile. Potential benefits of adopting an Agile approach are firstly, an earlier return on investment, and secondly, reduction of risk. To better understand these potential benefits, we should quickly review how work was conducted prior to Agile. This is best explained using the field of software development. The de facto approach for software development in the 20th century became standardised following Winston Royce's 1970 paper, Managing the Development of Large Software Systems. What Royce describes in the initial part of the paper is what came to be called the waterfall approach that was adopted widely by the industry. Interestingly, Royce actually described this approach as risky and invites failure. Royce continues to describe what is actually a more iterative approach. One of the major risks is that there is generally no customer feedback until the entire product is delivered. We shall return to this after explaining what time to market means to see how Agile can introduce ways of working that help to reduce time to market. Time to market is sometimes described as being from concept to cash. This means from the emergence of a new idea for a product through to that product being delivered to market available for the end customer or user. The entire time to market has been called the total lead time. However, there are generally two distinct phases recognised here. Firstly, the time taken from origin and crystallisation of the idea through to approval for production, and secondly, the actual production and delivery phase. The challenge with measuring the time taken for all of this is in identifying when the idea first emerged. For this reason, the first phase is known as the fuzzy front end. An organisational agreement on when to start the clock would help this to some degree. Once the idea has been handed over to the development team or squad, then the development lead time begins. A further definition is the time taken from the team picking the work item up until it is completed, which is the cycle time. The boundaries for these can differ between organisations as suits their needs. Using the waterfall approach, the entire product is developed before delivering to market, so the end date is more easily identified. Since with an agile approach the product is delivered incrementally, there is a need for the organisation to define when it considers the point of market delivery. To better define the boundaries of the measurement, let's explain. Using the Moscow method as an example, various components or features of a product can be prioritised. This is helpful for determining what really represents a minimum viable product or MVP. This prioritisation can be visually represented in Agile with the use of a product backlog. In the waterfall approach, we can see phases of requirements gathering and analysis up front of code development. The shift in emphasis in Agile is leveraging the skills of the development teams to provide solutions to customer needs. In this case, user or system needs are described to the development team and the team itself decides on the best software solution to meet that need. In this way, the time required for front-loading requirements and analysis phases are reduced. Incremental delivery of the growing product for review by customers helps to ensure that the product is actually meeting the user needs and expectations. This also provides feedback for prioritisation of any further development of that product. This also helps to validate business assumptions about what the product should be and contain. We can use game development as a metaphor to illustrate the MVP and iterative development approach. Game creators will produce an initial version of the game, a version one we could say, that is then released for the public. This is a fully working version but without all of the planned features. The idea being to gain feedback from the customers about what they like and what they do not like about that version. 
the developers will then release updates for the game based upon that feedback. In this way, the game is iteratively evolved into a product that delights customers. We could call this version 1 release the MVP for that game. Additionally, before each new release, there will be a limited exposure released to a test market, which is a limited number of users, to gain earlier feedback before the public release. In this way, remembering prioritization, if the customers never mention a desire for features planned but not yet produced, then there's no need to develop them at that time, since they would add nothing to the customer value. There are a number of tools that can assist us to reduce time to market. We can use value stream mapping to visualize the phases from start to finish of that total lead time. In that way, we can ask questions regarding the value delivered to the overall process by each phase and to look for opportunities for improvement. Within each phase, we can use process mapping for the same aims, which can provide us with measurable means of assessing efficiencies or metrics, for example, cycle time. Lean practices can be used to improve process times in both software development and also for non-software parts of the business. They originated in manufacturing, so are applicable to general production environments. For software development, evolving DevOps, continuous integration, continuous delivery, automated testing, etc., as well as improving engineering and coding practices all have a part to play. We've mentioned some tools that can be used but should not neglect the cultural element. Apart from technical aspects of production, mood and well-being of the people carrying out the work also impact productivity. So in summary, what we have seen is a description of the time to market metric and also the need to well define the parameters start and end point for its measurement. Definitions can vary, so the important thing here is for the business to specify that definition within the organisation. If we're going to measure something, we must be clear on what we are measuring for that metric to be both meaningful and useful. Thank you.